Thanks for it. Am I on here, guys? That's good as well. Uh, I've, I've known Stuart for a long time. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. I thought they'd never bloody end going on up there about Jess, didn't you? How... <laughs> I've known Stuart for a long time uh, when he was at Vector and before, and he's a very, very difficult man to ignore, but I usually find it's well worth the effort. <laughs> you can tell this is a JISC conference because everybody's seated towards the centre and the left, can't you? It's fa fairly obvious where you're coming from on that one. Um, this, this is going to be a conversation, not a presentation. So I'm going to ask you to engage. I'm going to ask you to use Twitter. Uh, they did uh, promise me that there'd be a Twitter uh, wall feed alongside. But, you know, this is JISC, so come on. You know, we can't have everything, can we? And like you said, budgets are bad. I usually, I usually find, Chris, starting off a conference talking about effectiveness and efficiency really gets people's blood going. You know what I mean? Really, really gets them going. So that was a good start for me. This is not going to be academic, because I'm not an academic, uh, although I knock around with academics. It's not going to be technical, although with me work for Toshiba, and Lee's here somewhere today. Uh, uh, I, I have no knowledge at all, really, about the big technical stuff. Uh, so this is going to be thought and prov provocation. Now, you know an awful lot about me because uh, I think everything apart from my shirt size and uh, my kids' ages and everything was in that biography. Uh, I don't know very much about you. So I'm videoing you, videoing me, okay, with one of the Toshiba little flip cameras that we've got now. Uh, but I need to know a little bit more about you. But I came down last night and stayed with me. Uh, son who lives in Wimeswell. I didn't want to drive down from Manchester. I live in Manchester now. And I didn't want to drive down from Manchester for a two-hour drive knowing that this was coming up and you'd be all here. And I knew Judy and Chris uh, would be anxious if I wasn't here. So I came down last night. And I had the usual uh, Tommy, my little three-year-old grandson, who you'll meet a little bit later on my presentation, uh, came into my bed about half past six this morning. And uh, we were cuddling and talking and everything like that. And... Uh, he said, uh, I don't want to go to nursery. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't want to go to nursery. I don't want to go to nursery. And we had that for about an hour then. I don't want to, because he thought I was probably going to be staying. So I said, have they got computers at nursery? I do want to go to nursery. <laughs> I, do, I do want to go to nursery now. Yes, I do. If I can play on the pooter, I'll go to nursery. So let's not underestimate. You'll meet him a little bit later. Uh, I'm glad to come back to Nottingham. Anybody here from South Nottingham College? Yes? Nice to see you. Were you there when I was there? It's a long, long time ago. I was principal there about 15 years ago. I don't look that old, do I? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was there. Not long, uh, but that was my choice. Uh, and then I was... At anybody from People's College? People's College? Were you there when I was there? No, I was vice principal there when Don Barrell was the principal. Way, way, way before your time. Uh, so it's nice to come back to Nottingham. I know I was down here for eight years uh, at vice principal and then principal before I decided to do an honest living uh, and work for myself. It's been the best 10 years I've had for my life, actually, the sort of stuff. There. And one of the first things that I did was I got a job with the National College for School Leadership because my background was secondary and further, which is just on the other side of this campus. Anybody you know that? Did all the leadership stuff, National College for School Leadership. And I remember with some colleagues that you might recall in mobile learning, uh, Mike Sharples used to be here, M Learning, all that. I was heavily involved in M Learning and mobile learning. And uh, we came, National College about 10 years ago said, can you put on a seminar for us about this mobile learning? So we've heard this stuff about mobile learning. I, we, I train head teachers. I work with head teachers in schools. So I said, yeah. So I got Jeff Stead from Tribal. And some of you might know Jeff Stead. Andy Black, who was then at... Uh, Vector, who was the M Learning person, and uh, Mike Sharples and another professor in M Learning, John Traxler, and we came down and we ran a session for the big bosses at, Mobile, uh, at National College and saying, listen, we need to get this into the psyche of head teachers. They said it had never catch on. <laughs> there you go. That's why National College is now like the Marie Celeste and is about to shut down, and Mobile Learning is going from strength to strength. Anyway, Lynn, uh, Chris, Judy, Stuart, thank you so much for inviting me. I think you're very brave. 
apparently they tell me this is the first time they've ever done uh, uh, live streaming. So welcome to all those people uh, they were tuning in today. There's some friends of mine, Merlin and Tony Parkin and quite a few other people that are tuning in. So welcome to them. And thank you for being so brave, inviting me, because as you know, I have a tendency to upset people. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to hold back uh, this morning. So let's find out who's from here and who I'm going to upset and who I'm not going to upset. Because uh, Judy, when she said, she, I said, well, I might be critical of one or two of the agencies and everything like that. She said, oh, be careful. <laughs> Biz will be there. So let's check out. Is Biz here? There you go. Speaks volumes, doesn't it? That's the first dig. <laughs> Is Elsis here? Speaks volumes. Second dig. Okay. Michael Gove's at the back. What, doing his O-levels? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, re he's revising for his O-levels. <laughs> All right, so you. Who are you? FE. If you're like me, you're from FE, from Further Education. Fantastic. Well done. Great. Take advantage of Chris's offer. Just, I mean, from my experience, FE, we've been sort of left out, really. They were all, when I was principal and working in it, I still am. I'm vice chair of governors of a college now. And we use ours in Yorkshire and Umberside. But I, I, I don't think FE was particularly made good use of the GIF services. Are, they, are you starting to now? Is that happening a bit more now? Yeah? Now that you know that they're available. And I have to say, I know about the GIF review and I contributed to the consultation and everything like that. Uh, there's some fantastic work at JISC, uh, and uh, it's mainly done, in my view, for, with the RSCs and people on the ground. There's some good, some better than others, and everything like that. But for me, there's an awful lot of waste in JISC. There's an awful lot of reports. There's an awful lot of evaluations of evaluations and research about research that ends up on shelves and never really has any impact. So I, I welcome the review, and I hope the RSCs get strengthened. So strap in, here we go. The reason I got invited was, uh, any of you looked at the pre-course, is the good test for you about whether virtual learning works. How many of you looked at the pre-conference stuff that's on the website and read any of the materials? Come on, be honest. Yes, yeah, good. Okay, well, one of the bits that I put up in order to try and engage you a bit more was this piece that led, really, I think, to my invitation, if I'm honest, Lynn, uh, was that I got a bit of profile uh, because I wrote a very, very critical piece of the system. And that's w what the dig is here. My dig today is not about you people. It's not about the people on the ground doing innovative stuff. It's what you're doing and achieving is despite the system. And that's my central point, and that's what I'm going to get to. So I wrote this piece called, Where are the Pioneers? Where are the paradigm pioneers in FE? And they're largely here and the you. But my argument is, we're doomed to fail in a system that's claustrophobic, an inspection system that wouldn't know good practice if, it's, if it slapped it in its face, an audit regime that doesn't un, un, understands cost and not value, a management, a leadership thing that really doesn't get it because ELSIS and uh, the department failed. I, I was part of the design team that put together the principles qualification. Have we got any principles in here? Fantastic. Where are your principal? Exactly. And when I was on the back to judges for the next generation of learning, let me tell you that the best practice I saw in using technology was in the specialist colleges, without a shadow of a doubt. So we've got no FE principles here. And when I was helping design the leadership qualification for the principal's qualification, which has now been dropped, by the way, uh, the, first, the first draft that went in that they sent me to have a look at, I kid you not, had one line in relationship to technology, and it said, recognises the importance of audio-visual aids. <laughs> so I wrote this piece. And Lynn Sedgemore rang me up and she said, oh, you're brave. And I said, well, I've got to 61, I don't give a shit now, to be honest with you. <laughs> she said, you won't, you, you, you won't be on Ruth Silver's Christmas card list, so I'm having that on my epitaph, <laughs> on my headstone, not on Lynn Sedgemore's Christmas, not on, what's the guy at AOC? Anybody from AOC here before I start offending people? No, good. So we've got no Elsis, no Biz, 
No AOC. That's a good start, isn't it? I think I can shut up now and sit down. I've made my point, I think, haven't I? So I wrote this piece, and what was interesting was, uh, and basically what it said was, there's some wonderful people doing wonderful things, but they're doomed because the system doesn't allow innovation. It stifles it. It squashes it. Uh, so I wrote that. And in response, my good friend Diana Lorelei, who I worked with on the uh, e-learning strategy, with Chris, with the Stuart actually, way, way back. Diana was the first person that put it together. This was in the uh, Bechter day, well, pre-Bechter pre -Bechter FE days, wasn't it? Yeah, before Bechter had an FE team. Uh, she, she responded, and I, I, and I see, and I'm working with her. And is Howard Browse here yet from Leeds City College? Is he there? Oh, thank Christ for that. We're doing a workshop at 11 o'clock uh, on what Leeds City College is doing on large-scale organisational change. And Diane has got involved with it. And, she, came, and she, she emailed me and she said, Bob, I really like your piece in the Times Educational Supplement. I think there are five or six barriers of, for change. And she put us... How many of you are members of ALT? Join. It's 45 quid. It's a massive, fantastic resort. And she came up with... Five barriers for change. These are the only slides, by the way, that have text on them. All the rest are pictures. So, if you're not on Twitter, get on it now. Log, get your mobile device out, turn it on. Uh, if you haven't used Twitter, here's a good chance to learn. Be brave, sign up, get onto Twitter now. Uh, if you're on it, you can do it and you can test it. If not, we'll do it by show of hands for those Luddites of you that are not still on Twitter. With the person sat next to you, I want you to agree on a score, not being completely disagree, and five, being completely agree with that. And when you've done it, and when you've agreed it, I want you to tweet it in using the hashtag, hash RSC eFair, okay? I'm going to give you one minute on each one of these five things. Ready? Okay, off you go. Not means completely disagree. Five means completely agree. What do you think? Okay. What, whether you think what your score is between you and your partner, what have you agreed? Whether you think it's a not one, two, three, four, or five. Not completely disagree. Five completely agree. What your score is with your partner? Tweet it in, and we'll have a look. And if you haven't not on Twitter and you can't do it, then we'll do it. Thing. Okay. Are we ready to go? Send your tweets in. This is where the live feed would have been good. So there's a bit of a learning point for us there. Okay. Who said not? Go on, this is old-fashioned stuff. Put your hand up. Not. One. Two. Three. Four. I'm in good company here. I'm not going to have a problem with my... Five. Fantastic. Shall we all slit our throats now and give up? <laughs> Number two. What do you think? Not completely disagree, five completely agree. Stuart, keep an eye on the time for me, will you? Okay? The Twitter stream's taking a long time to come through. Do it by hands again. Not, not, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, great, fantastic, you're doing well. That's absolutely right. No. This is Diana Lorillard, remember. Three. <laughs> yes. 
This is Diana being diplomatic. <laughs> Not. Not. One. Two. <laughs> Three. Four. Five. Get it on the video. Get it on the video. These people, see who they are. Get the names. We know who you are. Four. Not. One. Two. Ooh. Three. Yeah, sitting on the fence a bit here. Four. Have you done your old levels? <laughs> CSEs. CSEs. I got CSEs. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. CSEs, uh, grade seven French. <laughs> Not too helpful in Rochdale growing up French, I have to say. Uh, Okay, and the last one. Oh, did I finish off with a five there, yeah? Do we have all oh, that one? Okay. Last one. What time have I got to finish, Stuart? Is that all? Then we'll have to go to, uh, questions. questions. Okay, so I can eat. Now. Okay. Not. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. Thank you for that. So, the key question then is, that they, that just proposed to me, is evolution or revolution? Either way, if it's evolution, from my elementary, I actually got a GCSE in biology. I got an O-level in biology, grade three, and I went on to do A-level biology. But I'd failed me 11 plus. I had to go to the grammar school to do A-levels. And the head of biology called me his secondary modern bum. <laughs> Which was helpful in a sort of a motivational way. And especially when I won the biology prize for A-level and Cyril Smith presented us at Rochdale Champness Hall and Jim Davenport, who was head of biology, was stood there in his gown like that and I went like that. <laughs> But I failed because I ended up going into teacher training because the other grades weren't so good. So, anyway, biology. If we're going to have evolution, we need mutations. And given your responses to the previous five points, my point is it's difficult to have mutations in a system that is so constrained. I'm getting some nods, so I must be hitting the right one. Ten minutes, right, okay. So that's evolution or... We can go for revolution. And if th th this graph came from a software company in Los Angeles that they use for thinking about you. But the danger with revolution is it might all go wrong and you end up going back. So our choices are big revolution, big thinking different, or moving on. Now, how many of you come across the sigmoid curve before? I'm speeding up now. I didn't realize it. Sigmoid curve. Okay. So it's a biological model, basically, what it says is that all organisations, it's built on a biological model for organisations, but businesses use it as well, and that all systems, if you like, eventually will use up the resources that they've got available to them. JISC might be a good example of this. And it's when they get to that point, the place where they are the most vulnerable is at point X. So the startup takes investment of time and energy. It goes through a growth period. At point X, therefore, the time when you are the most successful is your most vulnerable. Because the people that have thought the way that thought them to get to the growth are the people that will take you over the top and down to the decline. Now, my point is that Biz, Elsys, AOC and all those people are going to take you over the top and down the other side because their systems thinking is built up in an analog world and we are moving into a digital world. So what we need is some revolutionaries and some pioneers. This is my favourite, reminds me of childhood in Rochdale where I'm very... No, seriously, what are you laughing at? It's true. The Rochdale Pioneers. 
foundation of the court movement. I'm very proud of my heritage. Of course, we could go into those areas. What, what is the characteristic that all these pioneers have got? What is the characteristic that this guy's got, Sebastian Throne? How many of you come across audacity, uh, Udacity, Coursera? Yes, you know about all that. The MOOCs. Have I got any nods? No? Sebastian Throne was a lecturer at Stanford University. He got tired teaching computer science to people who pay $30,000 a year, and there are 30 of them in a cohort. So he set up his own company, just Google it, Seb Thrun, and he started MOO a MOOC, a uh, massive open online course in computer science. And he's left Stanford Uni University. His, I was there last summer when he started this. His first enrollments worldwide, anybody guess? 300,000 people. Now, if you're in higher, who's in higher education? If you don't see this tsunami coming, it is going to wash you away in the waves. So he thought differently, not in the system that he thought and learnt, but I need to step out of the system and think differently. And of course, today of all days, the greatest pioneer that we've got thought differently on all sorts of levels. I just need to tell you a quick story before we move on. So we need some pioneers. We need some pioneers that think differently. Uh, when I came into Nottingham uh, a few uh, weeks ago, as I came out of the station, there was a woman on the floor in the dark, and it was raining, and she was looking for her car keys. And my wife, who was with me, I said, come on, we've got to go, it's raining. No, let's look, help this woman. What, what, what's the matter? I've lost my car keys, and I don't find my car keys, my kids are at home, I'm not going to get home. So we spent 15 minutes looking on the floor outside Nottingham Station looking for this woman's car keys. And eventually, I was absolutely pissed wet through and I said, are you sure this is where you dropped them? And she said, no, I didn't drop them here. I dropped them up the road. I said, well, well why are we looking here? She said, because this is where the light is. <laughs> this is where the light is. This is where the light is. Are this all going to be available, Stuart? Yeah, we're going to put these links on. I, I thoroughly recommend you go and look for the download. Most of them on PDF, I think, Bob, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, but we will put the links on our... Uh, Your very own GIST publication of this week. Absolutely. Learning in a digital age. And this one, you must have a look at this. Just came out last week. System upgrade. Just Google it. Richard Noss, £12.5 million of public money went into a research program and they came up with this. It's a great report and challenges, challenge, well, you can tell, system upgrade. Okay, because this is where the keys are. Not the light, the keys. That's Kieran, my stepson. Uh, he has Asperger's. He lives in virtual worlds. He'd die if he had to come in here with you lot, but in virtual worlds, he's a king. He's taught me a lot. And that's Millie, who I stayed with last night. And that's uh, my other granddaughter, Bella. She's two. Tommy on the left is three. He didn't want to go to nursery, but he does now because his pooter will be there. And that's me mum and Tommy. Now, who's teaching who there? Actually, the answer is both of them. He was showing her how to download Postman and Pat off YouTube's off, I, off the iPlayer, and she was showing him how to use Google Earth to show him where her and my dad had been on their honeymoon in Italy in 1948. So I'm coming to the end. This is, that was Rochdale Champness Hall. This is the music industry, folks. That's an FE college that I was in three weeks ago. Here's a quick test for you then. Which one of those numbers is most unlike the other number? I'm coming to the end. Have a look. I'm going to ask you in a minute. Have a quick word with your partner. See what they think. 
which one of those numbers is most unlike the other number? Shout out. One? Two? Two? You've done this before, haven't you? Let me just ask you something. When you shouted that out, two, how did you feel about shouting out something that was, you knew was going to be different to what everybody else was going to be shouting out? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, we'll discuss this later, Mr. Brown. Well, obviously, the exercise is this. Now, let me finish with this one. It's not about the technology. It's about new ways of thinking. We have got to think differently. Our leaders have got to think differently. Our managers have got to think differently. And if I'd have had time, I would have gone on and done the third millennium learning quiz that my kids, my uh, kids that I work with on the BSF develop. You can do it. It's on my website. You can have a look at it. It's the best leadership tool you will ever use in your college or school to getting your leaders on board. But you must do it with pupils, students, and the leaders in your college in at the same time. There's so many questions about use of new technology. Usually there's a 50 to 60% differential between what the kids get and the head teachers and the principals get. And most of the barriers are in our heads. Thank you very much indeed.